Hello everybody, welcome back. Carl again. Today I want to talk about my K-Line uh, Plymouth Switcher. It's a Bethlehem Steel. Uh, I got this at the train show a couple weeks ago and I really like it. It has a really great smoking unit and uh, really pumps the smoke out. Unfortunately right now I've been upgrading all my stuff to command control so it's kind of hard to run this on my layout because I don't have conventional operation and that's how this works. So so I have here an Electric Railroad Company Mini 2 Smoke. And so what this is, is the Mini Commander 2. Now this is the direction manual I got from their website. It's Mini Commander 2 for RMT Beep. And I believe there's three options for this one. There's a one that has um, lights, one that has sound, and this one is for smoke. So my plan is to use this for the smoke operation. Now I have looked inside of here already. And in, in this switcher, there's a smoke unit in the front there. Let me just take this out of the box. So I have looked in here already. In here is a smoke unit board that sits in here with a fan-driven smoke unit that comes, the exhaust comes out of here. Then there's a small board mounted vertically this way that plugs all the connectors in. And then back here, you can just see through the cab, there's that gray output. That is where the, uh, uh, what do they want to call them? The, that's where the basically the module is that converts the AC to DC and then allows it to go. E unit, that's what they're called. So I did do some measurement. This board is one inch by two inch maybe. Let's see if I can find the directions here. I, I can't remember. It's pretty small, maybe one inch by two inch. And I did a little measurement already. and. According to my directions, I can get a one and a half inch by one and three quarter inch board in that factory spot. So I'm not totally sure that this is going to work. Now this is the all-in-one module. This has the uh, TMCC um, command module already built into onto this, and then it's got a couple of outputs for the different features. Okay, so I just went to the website, and this is saying that the length is actually two inch by one inch and six. 0.65 inches high. It is a uh, true full wave DC driver at 2 amp continuous and 4 amps peak. So uh, this little board is actually perfect for this type of unit. Now on the flip side this is the same board that they put in those switchers. So depending upon the price of those locally you know these boards are like 50 bucks or so and uh, you can buy switchers. Sometimes I've seen them for 79 bucks. If that's your situation, it might be cheaper for you just to buy the switcher and then pull this board out and use that board that way. So, anyhow, underneath here is a smoke and no smoke switch, and then there's also a reverse on or off. So I'm going to use the reverse one as my program run switch. So what I'm going to do is just take this apart and see, hopefully I can make this fit. I might have to lose that gray kind of cover. Also, there's a person on both sides here. If I might just actually take one of the people out and make that unit fit, because I really want this to be TMCC. So, as we move along here, that's what I'm going to do. Now, all these lights already are LEDs, so I don't have to try to modify that. All I really want to do is bring this power and connect it to the motor and then connect it to the smoke unit and leave everything else how it is. So once I open it up you'll see what I'm talking about. Now this unit came with also these couplers. These are uh, operating couplers here. They're not electromagnet. You have to actually pull the push the plunger down. But they had these and then they had fixed couplers and I just happen to like these better. So anyhow I'm going to go ahead and uh, start taking it apart and we'll go on from there. Okay, so you have the four screws removed, and then you're not done. You have to actually pull these rails here out, and then to get this hood off, you have to actually push pull these out here, these little guys. So if you just grab these very gingerly and pull them out and go this way, and then I don't remember how, I believe I just took these little pliers and just got in here and 
gave this rod a little pull. Yep, there's that one. And there's that one. So pull those two rods forward, and then that allows this to lift off. Make sure I didn't forget any screws. Yep, there we go. And it comes off, slides forward. Now, as you can see, there's the wiring here and this little fake string for the bell. And that's actually how it, the lights work. So we'll just leave that to the side. And then, as you can see, here is that board I was that kind of that plastic I was telling you about. So we'll see. All right, so we'll set this to the side. Now, to get this gray thing off, there's a couple screws here that hold it on. And then this lifts off by pulling out this way. I think I missed two screws down here. I think these have to come out too. And then that lifts off that way. And then there's also wires on here that go to the front there. So here it is. Here's the smoke unit. You see the little fan motor. Has the power coming in straight from the smoke switch. And then you have this little board on the front that has some diodes on it for the LED light. So we'll just, just kind of leave this to the side. I don't want to mess it up. As you can see, it's just a small bit too wide there. It's definitely a lot shorter, but the height is definitely different. And unfortunately, it's too long to stand up. So, not sure totally what I'm going to do. I kind of thought that I was going to have to actually just move this gray piece out of there. So, that might be an option for me as well. See, the white wires here come up from the switch and run to here. And then you have the brown and blue, which I believe run to the um, pickup, actually run to this connector here, and then there's red and black. So one of them is AC in and, and ground in, and the other one is DC out for the motor. Alright, so I'm just going to disconnect that and actually move that out of the way so I don't break it. And I should be able to do the same thing over here. Yep. And so I'm just going to mark this connector so I know where it goes so I don't ruin that so the other thing I did also think about was I could cut this plastic so that one of the guys is still there but I don't know if I want to do that I might just take this out and just lose the fact of that I see the people now there's no interior cab light so you're never gonna see that board so to speak so you can see here's what it looks like inside there and there's actually plenty of room for this to fit down in there so that's might be what I just do now of course the other part of this is I have to I'm gonna have to cut these blue and uh, wires here because I'm gonna need to be able to get you know use that connector on the board I'm just gonna mark that connector so I know that's the fan this red and black is connected right to these wires so the AC comes in on this red and black and then goes out here and I can see that on the circuit board they're just tied directly together so I can disconnect this one and I don't have to worry about those wires and I'm just going to disconnect this too so now all I really need to worry about are these four wires here and the you got the motor wires here which is the brown and blue and then the white wire goes to the switch I think I'm just gonna cut these off and then if I ever need to put this back in I can just take this board off and then solder new wires in <clears throat> And on the board, they're marked. It says brown and blue and white and white. So if I do cut them, I know exactly where they're going to go in the future.
this connector here ran back to this top part and then they used these diodes and it looks like to me that's what they're actually using to turn the LEDs on and off because there's there's three LEDs here you have five black wires one red wire and it looks like they tied so you know positive 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 with three and then all the negatives would be one so it looks like what they're actually doing is using the output of the motor through a di through with this diode to turn that transistor on and off <laughs> so I might actually not need this board if I just put my own diodes in series for the uh, lights and I might be able to the cruise commander might have outputs for lights. I'm not totally sure here. Yep, see it says rear lamp and front lamp. So I might be able to just utilize those connectors here on the cruise light board, which is front and rear light, and attach it to, to the cab lights. So obviously the connector is different, so I'm either going to have to make my own connector or cut this off and wire it in. Of course, the other option I have is I could just utilize this board again. Alright, so here's the update. The manual that I got offline from the Electric Railroad Company, it's about the Mini Commander 2 for beep. It's terrible. It has nothing to do with my particular unit. Remember, I have the Mini Commander 2 smoke and light. And what I figured out was, you look at the pinout here. This is your main pinout. You have an antenna connector over here. You have these two posts that come with these gray wires here. These two gray jumpers. Well, I figured out that the, this one is a front lamp and this one is the smoke unit. So you actually can turn the smoke on and off with the TMCC remote using button 8 or 9 and then the front lamp when you're going in forward motion this activates and on this board here the, from the Electric Road Company right here these are actually triacs so when you go forwards this activates turning the front lamp on and then this is activated off of eight and nine those pins so unfortunately in reverse you don't get any light now the original board this is the original like connector board I called it and what happened was this connector here was actually tied to the motor leagues so I believe what happened was when you uh, when the motor was running it gave power to the front and rear lamps so that's these lights on the get that to focus that's these lights these lights always worked here on the side but on the front you have this light here so these always were on and I believe what they were doing is they were using the front and the rear light here off of the motor so when you actually drove it turned those lights on now what I've opted to do is I've just added a little jumper wire here that connects ground from the bottom so on the front here this is power and ground in uh, this was the smoke unit out uh, this was power out to the original driver board this here is the um, cab connector this here is the engine connector and then this was in from the motor leads and it ran through these two diodes so looks like what happens is when you turn it on the marker lights always worked and then only the front white lights here worked when you're actually driving so that would be this light here and then this light here so I've just removed this connector here this diode so the front light will work when it goes in forwards motion the rear light will work all the time so that's how I'm gonna do it now I could have done it the similar way when it was in forwards motion both lights work but I think I want the rear light always to work and the front light only to work when you're going in forwards motion that will just help me give me a visual indicator which way we're going so here's the work I've done uh, I actually removed the bottom here tied my hot and ground right into that third rail so the third rail roller is right down in here probably not going to be able to see that So here is the third rail pickup. It actually runs through a thermal fuse to this third rail pickup, which is this 
silver contact. The black wire or ground or common gets soldered to the ground lug. I use the original switch for the direction control. Now that's my program run switch. I left the original hot connector for the lights. I've disconnected the fan switch. And I don't want that because I can use the TMCC remote for that. And that's the power running right into this back port here, which is that. And let's see what else. I took the unused wires out. Some of them were populated, like I don't have any rail sounds. There's no way I can get any rail sounds in here. It's too small, so that's gone. And there was another wire which was unused but actually had a wire in there. I just took those out as well. So that is pretty much it. I am just about done. All you have to do now is get all this button back together, figure out if I'm going to cut this plastic piece here or just leave it out completely and shove this in. I think what I'll do is there's this rope here on the cab that runs down to the bell. I think I'm going to run the antenna wire through here because I'm not really sure how else to do this. This is die cast. And I'm afraid that I'm not going to get good signal penetration. So I'm not totally sure what I'm going to do about that yet. I think for now I'll just leave the antenna kind of stuck in here. And if that doesn't work I'll just run it out of this hole. Might have to make that hole a little bigger. So I'm not sure. I'll have to play with that and see how I can get it to work. Uh, let's see. I think that's everything. Oh, motor wires. So the motor wires here, the yellow and the blue, I went ahead and unsoldered the original blue and brown wires to the motor, and I just cut these wires short and just ran them right to the motor. Now, for me, they were reverse. You can see here on the chart, it says motor hot, motor minus. Well, originally, my motor hot was yellow, and my motor minus was blue. And I put the motor hot to the positive side of the motor, and I even marked it with a little red sharpie so I knew. And then the negative side, unfortunately, it starts in reverse. So instead of trying to cut that this insulation off here, see if you can see that I put this insulation on there, I just flipped the, flipped the wires. So I just pulled them out of the connector and plugged them in. So my colors are actually backwards. So if you do that, that might be a solution. But again, space is at a premium. And I might even have to shorten this wire for the smoke unit. It's really tight in there. Alright, so let me work on button it back together and I'll bring you back. Okay, so here's where we are. I believe I am done. I was originally going to use this board here that came with the unit originally. And I've just, there's not enough room to make it all fit. It's just so tight with this this, crew, this electric um, commander module. It's just not going to fit. So I've decided just to take that board out. So here's what I did. I removed the connectors here, as you can see. And I've just basically made little uh, jumpers, connected them together. So I have, you know, the lights here, they come into, for this front one, they go to this light connector here, which is this bottom one. So that operates the front headlight that I was telling you about earlier, right here. The red and green directional lights here on the sides, they'll always work. So once there's power to the track, those lights will come on. And then when I'm in forward motion, this front headlight will come on. When I'm in reverse, that light will go out. Now the back light setup, the back light will always be on, and then so will these lights. So, And I did the same thing here. I just have the little connector tied together. Um, and that's it. I have everything ready to go. I did put a piece of this foam tape here on the back of the board. And I'm actually not going to apply to anything. This is just more to prevent shorts because all the exposed metal contacts. So now I'm going to try to go through the process of getting the fit in here. So I uh, did like a little test run. I realized that this connector can actually go right alongside that motor there. And we'll just tuck the wires in and it actually fits down in there. And then this slides over top here. And I noticed that this little window fell out, so I'm going to just stick this back in there. Okay, so the other thing I did was I, I took this antenna wire here, and it's just wrapped around this shell, and it actually comes back here. So I'm going to try that. Now it's just a matter of tucking this, all these wires in. And you really do have to make these wires pretty short. They take up so much room. And space really is a premium here. And 
yeah, there you can see the wire for the antenna I'm trying to get to get out of the way here alright and I think that's about got it if I can just get this front to lock in all right, there we go. And as you can see, it is complete. Now, unfortunately, I did scratch the paint somehow right there. I'm not quite sure how, but and then as you can see, if you look through the windows, it actually doesn't look too bad. I did end up leaving the the people out here. All right, so I'll go ahead and uh, let's put it on the track and see what it looks like. Okay, so before I take you out on the track, I did go out and just give it a little test run before I moved the camera and everything out there. And I did have no antenna reception, which is what I thought. This is a die cast shell. So what I did was, if you remember, the <coughs> this is the antenna, and the board is sitting in the tender this way. So the antenna is down in this bottom corner here. So I have it running out. It comes up. I pulled the rope out that used to be here drilled that hole just a little bit longer and now here's the antenna wire coming out so that is going to be my fix for that so now I can take you out there to the um, track and show you in an operation the lights do work when it goes forward this front this front headlight works this back headlight always works so I'll move you out there and we'll take a look All right, guys, as you can see we're out on the railroad here we have the new uh, K-Line Bethlehem Steel with the Mini Commander 2 from Electric Railroad Company. And I'll go ahead and turn the track power on here. And as you can see, we have rear headlight, which always works. I'll just slide this back. And you can see there's a front headlight because that is the default position. It's not going anywhere. The first time I did this when I had the antenna wire here inside the cab, it would just run. So it wasn't getting a signal, and that's usually what happens. So I don't know. I think that's a pretty elegant solution for the antenna. It kind of comes out. It looks like it's supposed to be there, and there was that wire there originally. So now we'll just move it back. So I'll address the engine. And if I push button 9, that'll turn the smoke unit on. So I don't know if you can hear that, but the smoke unit is now on and it'll start producing some smoke. We have a little bit coming out now. You know what, I'll just go ahead and pause here and put a little smoke fluid in there. Alright, so I have a little smoke fluid here. Let me turn the uh, engine back on. So there's the smoke unit on. And then again, that works with button 8 and 9. So it'll start producing a little white smoke here in just a second. All right, so there we go. There is the nice smoke stream coming out. I can turn it off if I want. And so we'll start out here. Let me just pull you back. And if I rotate the wheel, she will start moving forward. see there's a nice stream of smoke there. really like that smoke unit that came with this K-Line unit. Alright, so we'll go ahead and reverse direction now. As you can see the rear light is still on and as we go back I'll show you that the front light has actually gone out. So you see there's no front light and if I change the direction again you can see that light comes on there. That's this light right here in the middle, remember? So we'll go ahead and um, turn that off by going backwards. Very nice response on the wheel. It's very quiet. Super duper quiet. So I really like the way that unit responds. And as you can see, it's just killer output on that smoke unit. Really, really nice. 
And then I'll go ahead and turn that off. And that stops it. And I really like that feature of being able to turn that unit on and off. Alright guys, well hopefully this was helpful to you. Give you a little inspiration. In close, I almost feel like now that I've installed a couple of these electric railroad products, I almost feel like you can't go back. You have to make the commitment just to install the electric railroad and you're not going to be able to go back. So if you decide that you want to get rid of the engine, you're better off just selling it with the electric railroad product. I feel like the time and hassle of going back to what you had just isn't worth it. Now that I've done this Bethlehem steel engine and uh, this traditional GP38 engine, I feel like it's just entirely too much work trying to go back and forth. So I'm never going to get rid of this engine anyhow. I'm just going to keep that. And for the price, I can't go wrong. And I, I got this for pennies. So... Anyways, thanks for watching. Go ahead and hit that like button down below. I appreciate it.